Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. We meet again a bit later today. I was up late, late last night, went down loads of rabbit holes looking at certain things, which I don't often do actually, um, but I did, I did last night. So this is going to be a mixture of subjects. Um, the Sussex squad. That, there hadn't actually been any sugary comments that I'd seen at that point, but this morning I see there have been some sugars on yesterday's video. Uh, stop lying about Megan. Stop hating on Megan. You're just a bitchy gossip. You're like Dan Wooten. You love Dan Wooten. I know you worship him. I, I mean, a great big long ranty. What I would say to that sugar and others like them, whether they're paid or not, you're actually doing damage to Megan because your people see you as an ambassador for her and when you talk to people like that you just emphasize and reinforce their dislike of her and you even may make some people actively hate her so I've said it many times before don't know if these they're probably paid and they don't give a toss about Megan I did actually say to one of them please stop hurting Megan right um, they were wishing death and bad juju and karma and everything on me, um, saying, you may not have had it in your life already, but it's coming. So I guess they don't know a lot about me or my life, uh, which a lot of you do. <laughs> it's almost like they're being paid and they haven't done their research properly, or perhaps they're cheaper, cheaper version. Or were they always cheap versions? I don't know. Megan, if you're watching this, denounce them or stop paying them, please. Anyway, so then it got me thinking. I went and listened to a Sussex Squad podcast, some of you may be familiar with. She's called Anne the Duchess of Success. I don't subscribe to her. I have listened to her once before, I think. I just thought I'd go and have a look. Um, and see if she'd said anything recently, and if so, what? Um, and the answer is no, she hadn't said a lot. She has said a lot about Dan Wooden, but I have to say, even though she's from like an opposing point of view to mine, um, I wouldn't say she is uh, what I would call bitchy. Um, she's fairly mild. Some of you might find her like really offensive just because she's got a different point of view. But personally, I, I don't. I find she sounds um, like quite a nice person. She sounds like a sort of young person who really believes in true love. And why not? You know, why not? I just don't think Meghan and Harry are it. And if you watch this. Um, then I went on to the, the actual last night, the actual Sussex squad um, dot com. And I was quite interested. I mean, firstly, it says on it, you can say anything you like here, but we're not a democracy and don't slag Megan off. So um, that sounds a bit dictatorial. And I was listening to the podcast they did with Christopher Boozy. I had to turn it off after a while. It's interesting to go back and listen to the older ones. And what I was really looking for is a connection between the Sussex squad, Megan and Harry, um, Christopher Boozy. Well, Christopher Boozy has a connection because he was on their Netflix docu-series of which they had full editorial control. Christopher Boozy is someone who created a report about various YouTubers and included things about their personal lives which have absolutely nothing to do with their critique of Meghan Markle. The nub of it, as we all know, is unless thou shalt worship Meghan Markle, then you're a hater and a racist and goodness knows what else. But I was looking at the, the actual SussexSquad.com website, its design, its layout. It's a GoDaddy. I think it's built in WordPress. I'm pretty sure. I had a little inspection of it. You know, you right click, you can inspect the website. Um, and some, I don't know how I found this guy actually, but I found um, a company or a website called MadeByArticle.com. Now, this is old news, I know, to a lot of you, but it's new news to me. I'd never heard of this before, but a lot of the media had already printed stories. Uh, Madebyarticle.com made the TIG. They also made Sussex Royal uh, and the Archwell website. Um, and they've made a few other websites, and I looked these other people up, and they are influencers, um, 
the one person is a designer, quite renowned, she's got a wiki page, to my shame I forget her name. I looked up, they're based in Toronto. Um, I couldn't find any clues on the actual website itself, who the founder of Made by Article is. <laughs> I mean, what catchy. I, I, I have had to write it down because I can't remember. Made by Article. Made by Article. And the founder refers to themselves as Article. You know, just Article. But I did discover in the end that the founder of Made by Article is a gentleman called Ryan Sachs. Uh, so then I started looking at who Ryan is, you know, who's Ryan? And I didn't really get anywhere, and that's about as far as I'm going to dig with it, because I was up until six o'clock this morning. It was just one of those nights I couldn't sleep. And um, so maybe other YouTubers could take up the button, or one of you two guys, who is Ryan Sachs. Um, and I did find it interesting, because all of the websites, I went and looked at all the websites he's designed, very nice, all GoDaddy, and I think all in WordPress. Um, and very similar styles and very, very similar to sussexsquad.com. But that in itself is no evidence, is it? It could just be a coincidence. Now, coming to the big thing, because, you know, sod the sugars, who cares? Let them do their thing. <clears throat> I loved all of your comments as always yesterday. And I noticed that there's, there's a real mixed opinion of how it's going to go down, and I love that. We should start running a book, actually, shouldn't we? Um, the ones that, that I really want to talk to today are those that think that Megan would be calling the shots in any way, shape or form if what I was talking about yesterday is correct. Like, let's just say Harry is out of there, he's in Africa. So again, and as I already pointed out to the sugars, if they do come along, I always say in my videos, none of this is fact, you know, don't take it as a fact. So you, if you can't be bothered to watch to the end of the video, sugars, get knotted, get lost, don't bother commenting. And I may well just delete your comments if I can see you've blatantly not even attempted to watch it. You don't deserve the wage you're getting from the PR. All right, I'm grassing you up now to whoever's paying you. You are not doing your research or making intelligent comments. Um, yes, what, what will happen if I'm right and Harry is out of there and he's healing, let's say he's healing in Africa, then basically I believe that the royal family's strategy all along has been wait until they run out of money. Now, some of you have expressed frustration, you know, why is it taking so long? Well, if he had $33 million, which is what he claimed in Oprah, he didn't claim that amount, but he said, none of this would have been possible without the money my mum left me. Now, I don't know what Harry, the intricacies of Harry's finances are, and I don't really care. Um, but it's obvious he had a lump sum from somewhere. Let's say it's $33 million. They left in January 2020. We're in July 2023. This is two and a half years later. If the rumours, and I emphasise again, they are just rumours that Harry is broke. If those rumours are true, that's two and a half years to go through how much money? Which I suppose the royal family, if they'd gotten a lick of Meghan, Harry's written in a book, William doesn't like Meghan, uh, so that I, I suppose, I don't know if we could take that as a fact because I'm not sure I believe everything I read in spare. So I don't know if any of it's true, but that's what Harry says. Um, that William said, take time, and says, you know, when he said, I'm going to marry this girl, William recoiled and went, what? Ugh, that's going a bit far, isn't it? Um, so I think the royal family have always been of the opinion, Harry's a grown man, He's got his own money, let him go and wait until the money runs out. Now, Meghan has only ever had power because Harry enables her. He's a member of the British royal family with a few quid about him. Once he's left the royal family, he's alienated. She helped him to alienate himself. That much I can see. And then when all the money's gone, because a lot of you have said she won't leave him until she finds a new meal ticket. She, I don't think she's going to find a new meal ticket. She'd have to find a billionaire who's been living under a rock for the last five years, wouldn't she? Or someone 
really, really rich and really, really, really stupid or deaf, dumb and blind, wouldn't she? And I don't think there are too many of them out there. Um, so I don't think she's got another place to go. So let's put ourselves again in a hypothetical and imaginary situation. Harry's in Africa. His bodyguards have gone, oops, sorry, I dropped your phone in that creek. Yikes, we don't have any phones or internet connection now. Never mind, let's enjoy a camping trip for a couple of months. She's going off her tits back in Montecito. Again, I emphasise this is all what I'm imagining. This is going by all the weird PR that's been going on. Um, she's going off her tits. She can't get hold of Harry. She cannot get hold of the one that has been enabling her. That is her power. That is her tool. The money is now running out. Wah, wah, wah. The invites have completely dried up. I can well believe I saw an article, Hollywood A-listers not wanting to socialise, sit down or work with someone like her. I made that very point immediately after the Oprah interview. A-listers are inherently private. They hate the thought of anything being leaked or getting out there. And they see her and Oprah going, oh, well, they were asking about Archie's colour of his skin and oh, yeah, and this, that and the other. And I nearly killed myself and they're really horrible. And so the royal family, the most private people on planet Earth, she's gone on Oprah, the biggest interview on planet Earth. What A-listers going to work? Is it, I don't know why it's taken mainstream media that long to figure that one out, actually. I think we all figured that out quite a while ago. So where's she going to go? All the roads have dried up. And then she gets a phone call from William's lawyers. Now, a lot of you have said, and Wally is actually at this school of thought, that Wally hopes they stay together because they deserve each other and they make each other miserable. And a lot of you have said that, and I get exactly where you're coming from. The problem with that is Harry is a Windsor. And much as a lot of people would like to see him frozen out and the royal family leave him with no money ever, ever, ever again, that's not gonna happen. That is, they can't do that. They just can't do that. And they won't do that. I can guarantee you that. So from their point of view, what they wanted was for his money to run, run out so he would come back crawling and then the boot is on the other foot. Then they're in a position of power and negotiation. And that is where I believe they're at at the moment. And I think you that they probably will would give her a bit of money but I think you'd be shocked how little I think oh, I'm just getting my tea mm. <laughs> put it on the wrong side of the barrel then um, I think if I was in the position of Prince William and his lawyers what I would propose to her would be for example something like rather than a big payoff an allowance a monthly allowance so it would be a pay-as-you-go situation. They would calculate what does she need for the her and the children and security and stuff. And they would say to her, you can have, for example, £200,000 a month allowance or less. They will be fine-tuning it. That's what I'd be doing if I were William's lawyers. It wouldn't be a lump sum. It would be a settlement in instalments. That way... She would never have too much money all in one go. And secondly, any breach of the agreement and snip. And it would keep her in line. And that should she remarry or something, then the entire deal would come to an end other than for supplying food, clothing and security for the children. OK, I don't want to talk about the children. Let's not get into that. I do see the comments. I, I do. You can make those comments. You have your free speech, same as the sugars do, to come along and call me a hater and wish death and karma, etc., etc. But I'm just saying I'm not going to get into that one because, uh, honest to goodness, I haven't got a clue what's going on there. I really don't. I've no idea. So that's what my, the scenario I envisage. If this was happening to me in my private life, let's say Benji. Benji's got a lovely girlfriend. Let's say Benji married a narcissist. We were multimillionaires. He had his own chunk. He'd gone off with this girl. There was nothing we could do to stop him. We would wait until the money ran out and for him to come crawling, do the same with Faith. For their, if they were that stupid and that pig-headed and that obstinate, that's what we would do. And then we would negotiate 
to price them apart. That's exactly where I would be. So I'm not saying at all, I repeat again, I'm not saying at all that this is the truth. These are all Fiona's rambling thoughts, what would be going through my mind and the scenario that I see playing out. Because what we see in the media is often very different to what's going on behind the scenes. So she's probably, you know what she's like. Well, we, we know how we imagine her, whether she's like that or not. She could be lovely, couldn't she? She could be out there right now in a garden picking some lemons to give to charity. If life gives you lemons. No, I'm not going to go there. Um, so that's what I think. And she would begin by saying, no, absolutely not. I won't accept a penny less than 500 billion. So clunk. And they sit back and wait and maybe a few new news stories get released and maybe life gets a little tougher and a little more awkward. And also there is something I can say about Megan, and I'm pretty certain about this. She lives in an Instagram speed, an Instagram time frame. She's like, click, upload, and it's there. Uh, do one thing today, do another thing tomorrow. Just move on to something else without worrying about the consequences of what you did yesterday. Blah, 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 blah. She lives at neck break speed. So she will want negotiation, decisions, decisions, decisions right now. Absolutely right now. She will be making her demands. Whereas the royal family are the complete opposite. They, they move at a snail's pace. However, there's only so long that Harry's going to be enjoying himself on his camping trip. Again, this is all in my imagination. So the clock's ticking to a certain extent, but they know how impatient she is and that she wants money. And God knows what other things are going on behind the scenes. Um, they, I mean, me, right? Okay, this is, I'm going to show a bit of a dark side to me now. If, for example, I had this situation with Benji uh, and he had a nasty wife, who'd done nasty things and I had recordings, I would probably go to her and say, look, thing is, we're rich and we'd love to give you a big payout. The thing is, have you seen this video? Are you behaving like this? Now, we've been approached by the press and the person who owns this, they're going to sell it to the press, so we've got to pay them off. I'll have to take some of the money from the settlement to sort that out. Is that okay? That, but that's just how I deal with things. Um, and I'm sorry to, it sounds awfully Machiavellian, doesn't it? So I'm not as nice as you think I am a lot of the time. And I can well imagine things like that going on behind the scenes. You know, We're trying to protect you, Megan. We want to keep you safe, Megan. We've got a box up there asking for an awful lot of money for these recordings, Megan. And uh, we've got to make sure we get them to sign all right NDAs and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on that. I see feelings are running very high on the Dan Wooden subject. Firstly, I'm not into witch hunts. I've been on the end of the odd pitchfork myself, which reminds me, Sugars, I did actually uh, say yesterday I wouldn't even want to see Megan destroyed on the world stage or anybody. Oh, I don't suppose they've got this far. They probably left their little poison comment and, and they'll, they'll be off and away with the fairies, won't they, onto the next YouTuber. Or is it copy, cut and paste, copy, cut and paste, copy, cut and paste. Anyway. I know a lot of you have strong feelings about Dan, some of you love him, some of you support him, some of you really don't like him, something to do with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. I did not follow the Amber Heard or Johnny Depp trial at all um, in London or the one in America. I mean, I couldn't help but notice stuff about the one in America, but the one in London, definitely, I never followed it. I love Johnny Depp. I had never heard of Amber Heard before. Um, it was just that there were other things going on in my life and I was really in interested in the royal family. That's really is my thing. PR, royal family, narcissists, now. So, I mean, however you feel about Dan, feel free to express it in the comments. Um, it is, it does evoke emotions. Various people, names like Carolyn, Caroline Flack, that's awful, um, stuff like that. But I'm not going to condemn Dan. Um, any more than I am anybody else. As I say, I've been on the end of the odd pitchfork and I do think these days there seems to be an awful lot of trial by media. But I equally know that a lot of you are judging Dan by things he said about Johnny Depp. So I respect both points of view. I really don't have a position on it at all, other than um, 
what the point I was making yesterday is because we've been bullied as YouTubers, staff have been bullied at Buckingham Palace and no mainstream media has come forward and said why, who, what, where, when, how. And the part that interests me is Dan is part of mainstream media and if I, if, if it is the case that there is Sussex Squad money behind that and Sarah Data said they've been fundraising for these journalists, whoever they are, $160,000 I saw last night. They raised $160,000 to help these journalists go whip Dan's ass. Mm. Guardian, uh, journalists, observer, independent, mirror, take note. Because really there, but for the grace of God, go you. Trust me, doesn't matter what team you're on. If you don't worship Megan, you can go to hell in a handcart. Trust me. Because us YouTubers have been on the receiving end of it. Wally's had plenty of it. People... Yet little staff at Buckingham Palace have been on the receiving end of it, allegedly. And nobody does or says anything, apart from Valentine Lowe of the Times, um, who I am very grateful that he did that and wrote that book. But it's just died a death, hasn't it? So anyway, I just, I'll move on from the damn thing. It's a bit like polit politics. If I say the word Democrat or Republican, some people get their knickers in a twist, the other video I did the other day where, I, and I'm talking about PR, I'm not talking about politics, I'm not even really talking about who Megan really is, I'm talking about PR, I can't say it enough. Um, but I have seen through her behaviour and her decisions, she is not a very nice person in my opinion, but I don't know her intricately as a person, which brings me to my final point in the video. As I've mentioned before many times, we have these two people in our lives who I emphasise have not been a problem in the last couple of years, actually, um, who I've, I've referred to them as narcissistic psychopaths. Now, they're a man and a woman, and they're married. I have met four people in the local area. Each of these people do not know each other, but each of these people have things in common. They've all been in and around this area for over 40 years. And they all knew the man before he married the woman. And they all said the same thing. He was a lovely guy. He would do anything for anybody. He would help little old ladies across the street. He would go and help elderly with their electricity, their plumbing for free for free. He'd do their shopping. He was the nicest, kindest person on planet Earth. And then he met her. Now, a lot of people might say it must have already been in him for him to be the way he is today. But I would actually defend him. And he is one of my mortal enemies. No. When you have been living with a lunatic like that, you will ultimately become that lunatic. It does not mean you were an evil person before. We all have good and bad in us. As I've just shown you, I have dark moments that are a lot darker than that, I can tell you. And if I lived with a true narc, and I've had a few weird relationships, I'm not sure I've ever had a, a knockdown. Now I've met these two, these two, and seen other things in action. I, I've had people who are borderline. I've had people who are psychotic, um, but uh, not like that. But if I was to be with someone, for example, who isolated me from my friends and family and worked chip, 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 pep, 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 believe me, I would turn into one as well. And then a lot of people would say, she must have always been like that. So I do put that word of defence in for Harry. He's been a little shit. And I put, believe you me, I'm sure his family will deal with him in the appropriate manner. Can you just imagine Princess Anne for a moment? They're not stupid, the Windsors, and they are not completely defenceless. And they are very much strategists. Now, to end on a just a laughable note, I also stayed up and I'm working my way through a, a TV show called The Peep Show, which... Uh, I won't put a link to, but I showed my son a bit of it and uh, he's a big fan of the in-betweeners and I will put a clip from the in-betweeners because it did make me laugh. If you're easily offended, 
don't watch it. As always, thank you very much for listening to my rambling thoughts and bullshit, and I look very much to hearing your thoughts and opinions and free speech below in the comments. Did you get that far, sugars?